us, uh, we have the wonderful Julia Evans and the amazing Mary LeBlanc Flanagan, and they're here to tell us all about Wizard Zines, which is their uh, zine company that primarily makes zines that talk about programming. So welcome, folks. We're really excited to see you today. How are you all doing? I'm doing great. It's so fun to be here. I've loved watching all the other presentations. Yeah, yeah, it's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, we've had some really cool projects so far today. I think we're just going to keep having cool projects all day and night. <laughs> and then day. Forever. And then day <laughs> the, whole, the whole cycle of it will be here. <laughs> and it'll just be cool projects. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you guys tell us a little bit about Wizard Zines? Yeah. Um, we made a few slides. We're going to find them so wizard zines is oh, do i know how to share my screen yes <laughs> screen share um, <laughs> lizard zines yeah. yeah there could be some more lizards in the wizards <laughs> <laughs> okay um so what's wizard zines uh so um wizard zines kind of grew out of some frustrations i had with uh explanations of things i would find um so like one problem i had was i would read a book and the book would be really cool. It would teach me like five things. And those five things would be amazing. But I kind of wish like, what if I had something that was only 10 pages and just contained those five things? Okay. Uh, that, that was one thing that I kind of wanted. Um, another thing that I wanted was I, I was frustrated about um, uh, like things that would start at the beginning that would assume that I didn't know anything. I wanted things that were aimed at someone who was like, I was like, I've already I've been using this for 10 years. Like I need something that's for people who are already using it, right? And like, who know all the things that someone knows who has been using it already for a while, um, like the basics. And I also wanted to, to like write uh, explanations where we like talk like a normal human being. Um, and like the dream of wizard zines for me is to like have, be like, you know, like when you're talking to a friend and like you ask them to help you out with something and they just explained everything to you like 30 minutes and you're like, okay, wow, I get it now. Thank you. Like I wanted to, to kind of bring that experience in a, in a zine of just like a really nice conversation um, with a friend who knows a lot of things and can help you out. Um, we, we made a slide with some facts about wizard zines. Yeah, yeah, because like, what is what is Wizard Zines? People out there, maybe you know, maybe you don't. You can write in the chat if you do know. Uh, there's some answers on the slide. Uh, so we started in 2014 as a fun side project, and now it's a real legit business. Um, of all the zine makers in the world, I mean, this is this is the one. This is a, this is a business. There are 20 uh, zines. And we printed 25,000 copies uh, and sell to people in 126 countries all over the world. And there are only three people at the heart of this. Um, Julia and myself and uh, Ali, who's not the Lee who's on this call, a different, a different Lee. <laughs> um, we we're, we're gonna do some like behind behind the zine stuff. Uh, Wizard zines, how how to zine, mm -hmm. um, uh, and talk about how kind of use like the latest zine as an example. I can also show you a zine. This is a zine. Can people see this? Is this visible? Yeah, we see it. We see it. And because like people always want to know, they see the zine and they think, how does this zine come to be? Right. Like how, 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 how do we get here? Um, uh, so like the first part of like, how do we get here is like, how do you decide what to write about? Um, my favorite way to decide what to write about is like to talk to like a single friend, like someone who I know who's super smart, who I really respect, who's like, wait, this is really hard. Like Git is really hard. Um, how do you use it? And that always makes me kind of mad because, like, I always know that the person, like, my friend is really smart. And I'm like, well, what's wrong? And, like, the information ecosystem, right? Like, they have the internet. They have Google. Like, <laughs> what has gone wrong that, that they're so confused? And, like, is there something that I could add um, that, that, like, might be useful um, and might, might help? Um, uh, I, I, I used to, when I started out, like, this is my first scene, I, I used to just write, like, here are some cool facts I just learned about this thing. Um, and that was amazing. It was really fun. Uh, I loved it. Uh, but the more I've, uh, like, the more time has passed, like, this was 10 years ago, uh, I wanted to write about Git, and Git is a topic that I know super well. And I think, like, when you're really familiar with a topic, 
when I'm really familiar with the topic, it feels almost impossible to explain it. Because at the beginning of this project, I was like, well, Git is easy. But it's not useful for me to say, like, it's easy, right? Like, that's not going to help anyone. Uh, so I need to figure out, like, how to get over this barrier of, like, you know, like, how do I explain this thing? Um, one thing uh, that we do really early on in projects is to try to just, like, get the vibe. Like, understand how people are feeling about a thing. Um, uh, for the Git scene, I made this little bingo card that has a lot of people's, like, completely opposite opinions about Git. Like, there's, like, I hate Git. Other people are like, it's so elegant. Other people are like, commits are immutable snapshots. Other people are like, what is this jargon? <laughs> What's an immutable snapshot? Um, there's like, just learn the internals. Learning internals is so cool. There's like, I don't care how it works. Um, anyway, it was it was really it was really like even though these things are all contradictory and people are have totally opposite opinions, it's really helpful. Um, so just understand like how people are feeling and what the like sort of like variety out there is. Um, uh, one thing about writing, uh, speaking, talk, talking about writing, like a lot of these pages we write are really short, right? Like if you want to write something that's like 20 pages that uh, just has a few things in it, uh, it's really hard. Um, so one thing I like to do is to first write like a lot of blog posts that are super long. Uh, so like this, maybe this, I wrote this blog post about Git terminology. I asked people like, hey, what's confusing? And I tried to like summarize like what about Git terminology was confusing to people in a blog post. I think this was like 2000 words, which is probably the length of the entire zine. Um, so I wrote a bunch of these blog posts. Maybe I wrote like 20,000 words. Um, and uh, just try to, try, to, try to write a lot and then condense it afterwards. Um, the big thing I thought it'd be fun to talk about um, was the feedback process we use. Um, because when we write a draft of the zine, like, let's say we write this page, like, how do you know if this is good, right? Like, um, how do you know if this makes sense? Uh, and so if, a few years back, uh, I, I read this book called, uh, write useful books that, um, the, the main idea I got out of that book was to get feedback from readers really early and to just like get it into the hands of a lot of people and listen to what they say. Um, and they had a site that they used to do that called help this book, which I think is really, is really cool. Um, but it didn't work for zines. So we, me and Marie, uh, built our own version of the site that we're going to talk about a little bit, uh, like how we designed it. Um, just to say like quickly, the kind of thing that we were hoping to get out of the site, um, was things like this. So on this page, uh, two of the comments were like, uh, what is exactly the ref log? <laughs> Which tells us that, like, there's some tech terminology we didn't uh, explain, right? Um, yeah, it was a page about the ref log. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, 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 there was a page about the ref log, but it's, like, later. <laughs> and we sort of were talking about it as if people already knew what it was. And uh, so, like, there was an issue with, like, the information ordering in the zine. And we needed to at least tell people, like, hey, we're going to explain this later. You're not expected to know it right now. Um. And I thought we could just look at uh, our feedback site and see, just chat about it. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about the the, the design, uh, Marie? Yeah. So when I first started, this was the first real big project Julia and I did together. Um, though we did make games for a pen plotter um, as a, <laughs> I think first. As a fun side thing. Um, but yeah, when we started working on this, the feedback system was people would, people, Julia would send people the zine and they would write back emails with some, okay, on page 24, I didn't understand this or I like that. So we were coming out of this context. And my background is I make experimental video games. So testing is core to everything I do. I mean, the game comes alive with people. Uh, so I came into this very excited about getting feedback from people. And, uh, and we, we built the system. I mean, I think a, a core part of all of this were these little emoji that you see on the side. Um, I have a question, I'm confused, I learned something, I have a suggestion, I love this. Uh, so when, when testers arrive on this feedback site, they have a copy of the zine all the way down and they can click anywhere on the screen and they can, they can categorize what their, their feedback into one of these emoji. And it was really important for us to use these emoji because people would give uh, feedback and they would be confused about what they were giving. So they would have suggestions and they would frame them as questions and they would learn something and they would frame it as 
um, being confused. And so for us, like putting things into category allowed us to chunk the information and really understand where people were coming from and what kind of feedback we were getting. Uh, so they, they leave an emoji and they can also, they can also make a comment. Uh, yeah, and Julia, maybe you wanna say something too about that. Yeah, I think um, like we, we also need to talk about like what kind of feedback was most important to us. Like I think, the, I think this emoji idea actually came from Help This Book. Um, like they have a similar system but we wanted to use different emojis in different categories. Um, and I think what we realized early on was that what I, what we cared about, the main like kind of like North Star was we wanted people to be learning something from the zine, right? People would often be like, oh, I love this. It's so nice, um, which is great. Like it's great for people to love it um, or to like think that something is funny, uh, but that's not the goal, right? The goal is for people to be learning. Um, and so it was really important to like come up with this, like I learned something emoji and really uh, look for that in like in the comments. Yeah, and, and I'll add that in general, when people have suggestions, they're not usually that helpful. <laughs> I mean, sometimes they are, but uh, as anyone who's ever made experimental games knows, suggestions are you know not the most helpful feedback, but it's important to have a category for I have a suggestion, so the suggestions end up there and don't get, um, don't get hidden in other sections. Yeah, like I feel like the question, the, the, the thing we probably take most seriously is I'm confused. Like if we see yeah. a lot of people who are confused about a page, we're like, okay, we need to do something here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I have a question sometimes, is it like a different frame? I think a lot of software engineers and people who work in tech are not allowed to not know things. Like this, it's like a, it's a forbidden state of mind. And so I have a question is sometimes like a, a gentler place for people who are confused to put their confusion. <laughs> Yeah, but but something that's really interesting about I have a question is sometimes it can be a really positive thing. Like sometimes someone will ask a question that uh, indicates that they completely understand understood what we were trying yeah. to get across, and have like some sort of like more advanced question um, based on that understanding. Uh, yeah, so true. It's so it's, true. It's and I, I mean, I love the I love this. I, it's not as good as I learned something, but I feel like Julia, for you, I love this. You're just like okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, I mean, I want to see light bulbs the most, but hearts are still nice for me. No, it's true. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. Should, should, should we look at the, the admin interface? Like that we, yeah, that's at? a good idea. Um, um, let me see. We also talk, yeah, about some of the changes that we made over time. Yeah. Um, like one, one thing that we did early on was we wanted to see, like, you can see this like kind of like orange thing. We wanted to see like exactly where people clicked um, mm. when they were confused. Um, that was important. Uh, we yeah. needed to be able to like check things off and remove them uh, when, once they were kind of handled. Yeah, and grouping emoji together, uh, like having some kind of way of understanding it in time, but also like seeing all the light bulbs together, for example, or all the, if all the questions and confusion are similar, then it's important to know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's, it's a little bit hard to see the trends here because it's, it's towards the end of the process. But you can definitely see that there are a lot of light bulbs on this page, um, and that like it's it's working to some extent. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. The recent feature we added was this little like show icons thing, which shows you kind of like the grouping of the light bulbs. So you see that there's like mm -hmm. kind of like a cluster of like light bulbs and hearts at the end on this page, um, and maybe like a little bit over here on this page. Uh, but like not so much on this panel, which is fine. Like not everything needs to be like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And something I think we've been exploring or, or touching on lately is that uh, people, people aren't always phrasing things in the most succinct or direct way. And so when we look at it, sometimes it makes more sense for us to replace a bunch of their comments with one of our comments, but some indicator that there were three people who said this thing was confusing. Um, there's this processing because it's not... It, it isn't just a number, it's it's human, it's human feedback. It's messy, it's bleedy, it, it like conflates things with other things. It's, it's like a complicated system. And so this is something we're encountering, I think uh, we've been encountering in the last couple of zines. It's just, at what point do we sometimes smush things together into a, a single, especially confusion, into a single comment? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like there's a way, I think if I click, I can leave my own comments. Um, like, <laughs> so we can say, hey, here's like how we want to summarize all this feedback. Um, Thanks, Greg. That's nice. Yeah, we see when you write in the chat, it just pops up on our screen and really big. So so we're, we're here with you. Um, <laughs> you. 
Uh, and then there's like checking off comments. And then sometimes we give ourselves permission to delete comments if uh, if it's really That's just fair. not working. <laughs> yeah, like, like, because well, we, some people yeah. like one person who has an issue and it's not something you can usually address. Yeah. And I think it's like pretty core to wizard zines. I mean, you're like, we're, we're open and receptive to feedback. It's all, it's a lot of it is this process of like reading what people say and hearing what they think, but also in some ways in the end, it is, it is a voice. It's not trying to be everything for everyone. Um, it's a lot of the zines are not for absolute beginners who have just started something right now. Uh, and so we are mindful of who we reach out to for feedback. And then also the, the context in which we receive that feedback. If someone yeah. has never used Git before, they are going to be confused a lot. Yeah, and like so, sometimes I think like sometimes we do take those like let's say we get some comments from someone who's, who's never used Git before. Like the zine is not written for that person, but at the same time, like sometimes we can see a way to kind of like make it a little bit more accessible to them. Mm -hmm. And if we can do that without like compromising on like the information uh, in the zine, we will try to do that. Um, uh, like sometimes there's a way to like clarify clarify the language without um with, without compromising on the information and we do spend a lot of time on that and we do try uh, we, sometimes we take the first panel and try and make that one accessible to like bring people in as well as to remind people who do know about git like what we're talking about in this moment because something that has been surprising for me in my journey into into code over the last seven years or so has been that no matter how senior someone is, no matter how advanced, they often won't know really basic things about something. Uh, there, it's not like there's like a consistent body of knowledge that everyone receives with like a, a little package when they start programming. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has like different bits and pieces and like deep knowledge somewhere and then very shallow knowledge somewhere else. And so making it accessible at the beginning, that first panel, or like thinking about at the beginning of the zine, having some kind of map of like how does dns work or some it really can help people who who think they understand maybe and, and but maybe they don't maybe they've been taught something that wasn't true yeah like i think what we what, what what i've learned is like it's very important to explain uh like certain basic things it's kind of weird because there are some basic things that everyone will kind of learn like if you've been using for the time the tool for five years you'll definitely know it like without a question but there are other kinds of like quote unquote basic things that a lot of people will just miss um for like various reasons and so it's important to include them um because maybe like sometimes i'll include some i'll, I'll explain something that's like pretty you know it's not like complicated it's not a super deep topic um, so i'm like wow i've been using this for 20 years and i had no idea that's really helpful because <laughs> like there's no like there's no guide right um and people have like a billion things going on and git is a, a very mm -hmm. small part of their life and so it's, it's easy it's easy to miss something yeah, which is why the feedback site is, is so helpful for us because yeah. we don't know. Like, Julia, you know what you know, and I know what I know, and but we don't know what other people know, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, <so it's> <laughs> like identify, like, which things people are like, okay, whatever. Like, we think it's obvious. They think it's obvious, too. Okay, let's leave it out. Versus, like, we think it might be obvious, and everyone's like, oh, my God, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in our work together, I feel like I have to often, like, I've, I I bring some courage sometimes. And Julia, you're the nicest person to work with in the world. But sometimes I have to ask really basic questions uh, because, and I have to just swallow my pride or something and ask them because if I'm asking them, other people will be too. And yeah. it's, uh, yeah. Wait, I'm going to give show a thing. I see we've gotten small again, but I'm going to show some a cool kind of show and tell. The debugging manifesto. Yes. This is so great. I I, uh, I use this and uh, the zine that you folks published, the Pocket Guide to Debugging. I use it yeah. often. Yes, that very same. <laughs> if people want to know more and see more and maybe get themselves some zines, where can they go to do that? Uh, wizardzines.com, I would say. This is spot. Amazing. Amazing. We love wizard zines. And I know... I, I know that this is a topic that <laughs> that is unsure, but what kinds of things are you guys hoping to write about or explore in the future? Even just vague uh, general mm -hmm. topics. I mean, right now we're talking about the terminal. That's what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, as we're talking about what is hard about using uh, the terminal. Uh, there, I mean, we've already published like I would say like four zines about the terminal, but I think <laughs> we can have it again. <laughs> We're, we're talking about a different a different take. 
Amazing. And there's the, the whole vibe. Yeah, there's like an idea and then there's the vibe. And it's like, okay, is this something that is interesting to people that there isn't already a good resource um, and, you know, that is exciting to us? There's, there's a lot of process. Uh, and yeah, I mean, one of my favorite things about your zines is like, I feel like I know a decent amount about computers, but sometimes I read them and it does totally go over my head. But more than once, I've gone back to something I've read in your zine and been like, oh, like now... I get the deeper knowledge and that's really cool because I feel like a lot of things, like you said, they're introductory or they have like assumed knowledge. And like, I, I keep your zines on my shelf and I often go back and reference them and, I'm, and I always find new things or understand things better. So. Oh, that's amazing. That's the dream. Yeah. <laughs> We're a very zine positive space. Very zine positive at Oshawa. <laughs> 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 do, do you guys want, want a sneak peek of something we're working on? Absolutely. That would be let's, amazing. Let's finish with a quick sneak peek. Um, we've been trying to make a zine box. You can put Ooh. your zines in. Yes. Um, and they all kind of like go in there. I love that. I have been trying to find more storage methods. That's the sneak peek. I love yeah, that. it has a spine side. Do you want to show the spine side too, Julia? Because you can you can like show it like zine spines, or you can also show oh, the, yeah, you can have all these categories oh. of zines. Yeah, it looks so good. I love the the decorative aspect as well, like mm -hmm. the little swirls and everything. Uh, Birdie says that's a good box, and Birdie is right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Well, so I hope much. everyone donates. Okay. I hope everyone calls in. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. Um, thanks for having us. Thank you for joining us and yeah, make sure y'all check out Wizard Zines. Make mm -hmm. sure you um, really utilize the resource. It's a great resource. There's a, a variety of topics covered, very helpful and more to come. More to come. <laughs> I'm a fan of, of Oshawa. Um, I went to the Open Hardware Summit this year for the first time and I'm not a big hardware person, but I loved it. Um, Yay. Oh, that's so good to hear. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so yeah, much for joining us, y'all. <laughs> Yeah. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>